Can you hear me well? Okay. <laughs> my name is Tom Yu. Thank you for coming to my lecture recital. Uh, I hope that uh, the topic that I'm going to talk about is interesting to all of you. Uh, today, I'll be discussing clarinet sonatas in the 20th century. I selected six sonatas uh, that show the wide stylistic variety in the genre, which are written on the program you have. Do you know about clarinet sonatas in the 20th century? Uh, even many clarinetists would say, not really. The first sonatas for clarinet and continuo were um, written in the 1790s by François de Vienne. During the 100 years from de Vienne's sonata to Brahms' two sonatas, written in 1894, there are only about 30 sonatas that are still performed with regularity these days. But since the beginning of the 20th century, there has been an enormous increase in work for clarinet. An article from the Journal of Research in Music Education shows that there were 100 pieces added on a list of works for clarinet only between 1966 and 1972. Unfortunately though, only a few works have remained in the repertoire. The range of musical styles found in the 20th century is vast, encompassing Impressionism, Expressionism, Neoclassicism, Serialism, Minimalism, and more. With its wide register, huge spectrum of dynamics and timbre, and various extended techniques, the clarinet is uniquely suited to the performance of all such styles with flexibility that other woodwind instruments would find hard to match. I'm going to demonstrate the full range of expressive possibilities on the clarinet in the great diversity of styles found in the 20th century by pointing out special uses in the work that were not common in the classical and the romantic period. The first movement of a sonata often includes crucial elements that can define the character of a whole piece. Therefore, the first movements of each work will receive the bulk of analytical attention, while a more cursory glance will be given those movements which follow. The piece chosen for this lecture recital will be explained in chronological order. The first piece that I'm going to talk, going to introduce is Saint Song Clarinet Sonata in E flat major, opus 167, written in 1921. Camille Saint Song, one of the most famous French composers in the late Romantic era, wrote three woodwind sonatas during the last year of his life for oboe, clarinet, and bassoon. He also intended to write sonatas for flute and English horn in an effort to found solo repertoire for those woodwind instruments. However, he died before finishing this plan. Sing Sang's clarinet sonata is in four movements. This sonata was dedicated to Augustus Berrier, a fine clarinet player and a professor at the Paris Conservatoire. According to musicologist John Galua, the clarinet uh, sonata is a masterpiece full of impatience, elegance, and discreet lyricism. The style may be considered neoclassical since the work possesses elements of the galant style of the 18th century, as do the composer's other two woodwind sonatas. Hence, it is not su surprising to find forms associated with the Baroque flute utilized here. Of special interest is the moving way the sonata concludes. After all the various atmospheres, calm, playful, sad, and virtuosic, shown in the four movements, the opening of the first movement suddenly reappears at the end of the last movement with slightly altered harmony, perhaps 
suggesting the composer reminiscing on his early life in the fatal cell. The sing-song sonata employs a conventional tonal language, and the keys of all movements are closely related. But what is remarkable in this tonal language and this deployment of key, considering the ear of composition, is precisely the unremarkable nature. Sing Song, like Rachmaninoff and Strauss, continued to compose well into the 20th century in a style uh, derived wholly from the aesthetic of the previous century. Willfully ignoring the proliferation of modern styles with which it is contemporary. The first movement of Sing Song's clarinet sonata can be heard as a, a traditional clarinet sonata but it contains non-traditional elements. As mentioned before, the formal structure was built conventionally, but the harmonic structure is more advanced. Given the neoclassical nature of the work, one might expect the first movement of Sing Song's clarinet sonata to be kept in sonata form. And in fact, there are three main sections that correspond roughly to exposition development, and recapitulation. But the central section lacks any real development of previously sounded material. So it would be wiser to de uh, designate the form as a kind of ternary structure with a coda, in which the return of the opening section is modified, particularly at the start, by subtle alterations in both the melodic and harmonic content. Now, I'm going to perform the first movement of Sing Song's Clarinet Sonata. Let's pretend you have no information about this piece and guess what year or what period the piece was written. Also, uh, please see how Sing Song made the returning section different from the opening. So, uh, let me introduce my pianist. Uh, I hope he can hear that. Uh, Jun Cho. <laughs> Jun Cho.
sound like a clarinet sonata from the 20th century. The next piece I'm going to discuss is John Cage's sonata for clarinet, one of the most influential musicians in the 20th century. The American composer John Cage wrote his sonata for clarinet in 1933. The work was premiered with the composer at the piano at a New Music Society of California workshop in San Francisco because the clarinetist who was supposed to perform the piece was unable, while his replacement, the principal of the Los Angeles Philharmonic, proved unwilling. Cage here employs his personal version of the 12-tone method of composition developed by Arnold Schoenberg, with whom a few years later, Cage would study. The sonata is in a three movement form, vivace, lento, and vivace. The last movement is an exact pitch retrograde of the first movement in different registers. There are several noteworthy characteristics of Cage's sonata which can be observed even before analyzing the work. First of all, there is the question of instrumentation. This is the very first sonata for an accompanied clarinet. All previous clarinet sonatas include a keyboard accompaniment. Secondly, the composer did not follow the conventional rules of notation. In the pre preface of the work, he wrote, natural signs are not used. A flat applies only to the note it directly precedes. Phrasing and dynamics are not given. Moreover, he only marked the minimum articulation, which are the staccati in the first movement. It is nearly impossible to play this work without any slur, because um, there are notes uh, which have to be played rapidly, such as 16th note quintuplet in the first movement in tempo vivace. This fact implied that the interpretation of this piece has been left to performers. Lastly, the duration of the whole piece is very short in comparison with the other clarinet sonatas written in the previous era. It only takes approximately six minutes, which is insufficient to play even the first movement of Brahms' first clarinet sonata. The first movement is in a ternary form, or variation on sonata form, with the first two sections forming a kind of double exposition, A and B. The middle section A1 uh, being closely related to the first section A, and the last two sections constituting a reverse recapitulation. Section A2 has some characteristics of ISO rhythm in the sense that Cage used repeating rhythmic pattern with different melodic pattern. Mm -hmm. Just as in the talea and color of Isogram. The beginning of recapitulation has the same rhythmic pattern as that of exposition, while the melodic pattern is a retrograde in the same register. In spite of the fact that Cage's sonata was written only 12 years after sing Sam sonata, it has drastic differences. The work is unaccompanied, has no key, features metric ambiguity, and dabbles in aleatoric performance techniques. It has seemed to come not only from another continent, but from another planet. I'll perform the first movement of Cage's sonata which takes only one minute. Thank <laughs> you. 
you believe that Seng Sang Sonata and Cage Sonata are only 12 years apart. Another tw 12 years later, Weinberg's Clarinet Sonata was written in 1945. Mieczysław Weinberg was a Polish composer from a Jewish family in Warsaw. For me, uh, his life is dramatic and tragic, and it inspires me so much. He successfully escaped from Warsaw to Minsk uh, just before the Nazis' invasion of Poland in 1939. But his parents and his younger sister, who had remained behind, perished in the Trauniki concentration camp. Later, he was evacuated from Minsk to Tashkent in Central Asia in 1941. In 1943, finally, he moved to Moscow at the invitation of Dmitry Shostakovich. Even after settling down in Moscow, where he had lived until his death in 1996, he was arrested and charged in 1953 in connection with the doctor's plot, an anti-Semitic campaign that could carry a sentence of death. Luckily, he was released from prison with the tireless help of Shostakovich. Throughout these continuous hardship, Weinberg never stopped uh, making music. He continued studying composition at the Minsk Conser Conservatory, and he wrote several works, including his first symphony, of which he sent a copy to Shostakovich in Tashkent. The relationship between Weinberg and Shostakovich was not only personal, but professional. They shared new composition and influenced each other. Even though it was composed only two years after Weinberg arrived in Moscow, the musical influence of Shostakovich is clearly shown in his clarinet sonata. Weinberg wrote his clarinet sonata, Opus 28, for clarinet in A and piano. Right after the end of the Second World War in uh, 1945. And the premiere was given in the next year by a cl clarinetist, Vasily Getman, with the composer at the piano in Moscow. The work consists of three movements Allegro, Allegretto, and Adagio. The first movement shows the composer's fervent uh, lyricism. The second movement alludes to Jewish klezmer music, an important part of Weinberg's sound. The composer chose a slow tempo for the final movement rather than a fast one. However, he still presented virtuosity on the clarinet in a cadenza as well as in the lyrical conclusion in D major. There are no extended techniques used in the work but it is demanding to execute the fast passages in non-traditional tonality, especially the cadenza in the last movement. Traditional clarinet sonatas usually begin with an introduction and or the main theme on the piano, or present one of them by the two instruments together. In addition to the fact that the composer let the clarinet play un unaccompanied for approximately 30 seconds at the beginning of the first movement, he placed a piano solo for 22 measures at the beginning of the last movement, which takes about two minutes to play. After this long solo, the clarinet is given a two-part cadenza. To employ this long cadenza-like solo part on both instruments in the genre of clarinet sonata was a way of breaking new ground. Another feature of Weinberg's first movement that distinguishes his sonata from those written before it is found in the use of metrical phrases. Despite the apparent meter of common time with no clarifying accompaniment, and by using note values of differing, now differing length, the composer achieves a liberating ambiguity of rhythm. 
at the beginning of the movement, the clarinet introduces the main theme alone over four phrases divided by slur. There is a transition in the recapitulation and it has an interesting harmonic component. The right hand of the piano, along with the clarinet, presents a D major chord, while the left hand outlines G minor. Thus, the first two measures of this part can be characterized as polytonal. Though it is composed later than the cage sonata, Weinberg's sonata reveals a deeper connection to European musical tradition. On the other hand, it is more daring and unconventional than the sonata of Saint-Saëns. I'm going to perform the first movement of Weinberg's sonata. I hope you find his somewhat bright lyricism even from his hard life.
Martha Richter was a prolific American composer who was born in Wisconsin and died in New Jersey. She studied composition with William Bersma and Vincent Persichetti at the Juilliard School of Music from 1945 to 1951. Richter composed her sonata for clarinet and piano in 1948. The work has three movements and it follows a conventional tempo scheme, fast, slow, and fast. However, those tempo markings do not indicate mood or expression. The second and the third movements are in ternary forms, while the first movement does not belong to any traditional form. The whole piece is in an atonal style with textures that are percussive rather than lyrical. This sonata has not been widely played, but it contains noteworthy characteristics. Though there are no extended techniques employed in this work, it is not easy for performers to play. There are a great number of leaps from one register to another in the first movement. Additionally, there are constant changes of meter throughout the piece. And most of the time signatures used are not traditional. Thus, to stay together with the pianist is challenging. Between the absence of memorable melodies, the harsh dissonances, and the shifting meter. An essential element of sonata form is to have a recapitulation which recalls, in some fashion, material from the exposition. The first movement of Richter's sonata does not meet this requirement, relying instead for its formal coherence on a series of central tones that serve to delineate sections. It would seem to be the composer's intention to make rhythm the prime ingredient in this work, considering the percussive textures, the restless metric changes, and the repeating, evolving rhythm pattern we are given. The treatment of pitch, though not strictly serial, avoids both the tradition of lyrical melody and the convention of tonal harmony. This unrelenting dissonance serves further to accentuate the prominence of rhythm here as the prime means by which form is articulated. In some ways, this emphasis on propul propulsive rhythm would seem to anticipate the minimalist movement in America. Richter's sonata is more different from Saint-Saëns' work than Weinberg's sonata. Even though those works share the same instrumentation, in the sense that she wrote the piece without any traditional form in the first movement, and that she used the instruments not for expressing melodic line, but for showing the changes of motion, dynamics, and registers in a percussive way. Her sonata is even more avant-garde than Cage's sonata because of its formal structure and the way she employs the instruments. Now, I'm going to play the first movement of Richter's Kleine Sonata. I hope you enjoy the percussive way she created. Thank you. 
We have discovered clarinet sonatas from Europe and the United States. And now we are going to Latin America. Carlos Costavino was an Argentine composer and pianist. His composition number more than 500, many of them for voice or solo piano. Being an accomplished pianist, Costavino endowed even the accompaniment piano part with imagination and expressive atmosphere. His works are stylistically conservative with romantic titles and expressive harmonies. Structurally, he relied upon forms and techniques inherited from the past, disdaining the various modernist styles with which he was surrounded Guastavino allowed himself to be influenced by 19th century Argentine nationalist composers, such as Julian Aguirre. Guastavino's sonata for clarinet and piano was completed in 1917 and dedicated to Luis Rossi, an Argentine clarinetist. In keeping with the classical tradition, the work is in three movements, Allegro Deciso, Andante, and Rondo Allegro Spiritoso. Guastavino also deployed his tonalities in a time-honored, romantic fashion, progressing from the darkness of F minor in the first movement to the triumphant parallel major in the third movement. The first movement is in sonata form, the second movement in ternary form, and the last movement 
rondo form. The presence of Latin American dance in this work allows us to characterize it as an example of nationalism in music. Lyrical melodies predominate in each movement, although the opening of the first movement is rather abstract. The second movement overflows with romantic feeling, and the last movement presents lively melody, as well as an expressive flow section in the middle, which is related to material from the first movement. Guastavino also included chromatic and contrapuntal passages in this piece, in which clarinet and piano play equal role. One almost gets the impression of a fantasy because conventional three cadences are rare and the absence of the tonic chord uh, in the main thematic section makes the exposition ambiguous in terms of key. What sense of key center there is would seem to exist through the insistent reiteration of the dome. Polyrhythms of two against three often appear. This rhythmic figure plays an important role in the first movement and gives the character of Latin American dance along with the characteristic melody line. This movement preserves most characteristics of traditional sonata such as key relationship and formal structure. However, other material that the composer uses make it sound different from the genre. The dance-like introduction, the lack of the tonic and cadences to it, the prevalence of do dominant and half cadences, and two against three polyrhythms with melody lines in the Argentine style. Therefore, though this work can be said to be written in a conservative manner, it is clearly distin distinguishable from sing song. Even though Guastavino's and Weinberg's sonata shared some characteristics, lyricism, indigenous melody, cadenza-like moments, Guastavino's work still sound more traditional in terms of its harmonic and straightforward form. I'm going to play the first movement of Guastavino's clarinet sonata. Let's see how you would name the piece between sonata and fantasy.
The last work for this lecture recital is Denisov Sonata for Clarinet Solo. One of the most influential Russian composers of the 20th century, Edison Denisov was born to an engineer and a doctor in Tomsk, Siberia. He majored in mathematics at Tomsk University, but at the same time, he entered the state musical education establishment. Eventually, Denisov decided to study composition at the Moscow Conservatory at the prompting of Dmitry Shostakovich. Denisov wrote his sonata for clarinet solo in 1972. It is dedicated to Lev Mikhailov, who taught clarinet and saxophone at the Moscow Conservatory. The sonata has two contrasting movements, lento, poco rubato, and allegro giusto. The first movement is improvisatory sounding and legato in a slow tempo, while the second movement is straightforward and rhythmical in a fast tempo. Compared to the standard of clarinet sonata, which keeps three or four movements, Denisov, therefore, has an unusual structure. Denisov's sonata has become one of the most popular solo works for clarinet and is regularly included in the repertoire of the authoritative international competitions today. This piece is also one of the most demanding contemporary works for the instrument. In the first movement, the composer employs various poly polyrhythms along with extended techniques such as flutter tonguing and glissando. The second movement consists of uncommon time signature. With these constant changes of rhythm in a fast tempo, agile staccati are required to maintain the tension on repeating more signal-like notes on B flat. The first movement is also notable for its use of microtones. Such practice was still relatively rare at the date of composition, and the composer fittingly provides an explanatory uh, list of the symbol utilized. Extra efforts are needed to get used to the fingerings and the small intervals in order to play works in which quarter tones are employed. The structure of Denisov's first movement lacks those clear formal divisions that normally are associated with sonata form. Still, there are three sections that can be distinguished by registers and musical textures. The movement is unmetrical without any bar line. The first three notes sounding D, E, and E flat constitute the main motive of this movement. This motive is used in various transformation of register, timbre, and rhythm. Also, uh, the first two notes sounding D and E imply the letters of Denisov's name, D from Denisov and E from Edison. The manner in which the composer inscribes his name into his work has precedent in the musical practice of both Shostakovich and J.S. Bach. The instrumentation of the sonata is the same as that of Cage's work, solo B flat clarinet, and it differs from that of clarinet sonata in the previous era. Denisov's sonata does not share any characteristics of traditional clarinet sonata. The only factor which can present similarity to the genre is that the motive at the beginning of the first section is used in the other section in variation. Thus, this piece is the most progressive work among the selected sonatas tonight. I am now going to play the first movement of Denisov Kleiner Sonata, and I hope you enjoy the taste of quarter tone.
Sonata and Sonatas were written in many different ways by composers from various countries in the 20th century. Some of them, like that of Saint-Saëns, are written in the style of the classical and romantic period, employing three or four movements and traditional forms in the first movement, along with conventional harmony. Other composers, such as Cage, Weinberg, and Guastavino, wrote their clarinet sonatas by combining some conventional characteristics of the genre with new ideas from the 20th century, such as atonality, 12-tone technique, nationalism, and unmetrical rhythm. The remaining composers featured here, Richter and Denisov, turned away from traditional composition and created avant-garde clarinet sonatas due to the fact that some conservative works were written after the appearance of progressive works, it is hard to say that there is a chronological development of the genre in the 20th century. Clarinet sonatas in this century rather reflect the individual characteristics of the composer. If someone asks you whether you know anything about clarinet sonata in the 20th century, I hope now you can say at least yes a little bit. Thank you for coming tonight.